Hey, I'm looking at doing a lightning fast recap on where we're at on this project to keep me working and you up to date. So pay attention, we're moving quick here on Ryan Flies. Ah, uh, some successes uh, to start. Unfortunately, some of my hoses are not correctly sized. I didn't fully understand how all this would come together. So I'm gonna figure out exactly what lengths and end fitting types I need so I can have them remade. All right, we're gonna switch back to baffling for a bit because I've hit some roadblocks in other areas. Uh, originally, I left off this piece which is the oil cooler brace. Now my oil cooler is supported by the engine mount on the other side of the plane. I figured I don't need this, but I think I do. Uh, if I leave it off, creating a baffle seal around this angle here is gonna be far more difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed, then get everything back on the plane and start working on the forward baffling. some really difficult riveting, uh, but only one of them really got away from me, and I'm just gonna leave it, because it's, it's holding. Uh, the top will be cut to the contour of the cowl, but I'm gonna hold off on that. I'm gonna start in on the forward section of the baffles. It is taking me a bit longer to figure out what I'm looking at on this next piece. I'm doing a little make-believe here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I bought these a while back. I have yet to put them in the plane. Um, and it might be a couple weeks before I do so. Maybe about when I get my upholstery in. Side note, that's been ordered. 
very excited. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit. Well, other than the fact that it's about the only way I feel like I'm moving forward on this project, um, I wanted to bring a, a quick message to everyone that may be in the middle of their own build. Crow is unfortunately uh, being forced to raise their pricing. I think we all set out with a budget in mind and we've all blown that for one reason or another, but inflation is definitely one that's affected my project. So if you want to get in before the price increase, you got to get your order in before June 1st. That leaves about a week, I think, uh, from when this will air to, to make your selections and, and get that order ready. When it comes to selections, I've got some tips. As you know, I've been fortunate enough to get some flying time behind RVs now, and I've noticed some things about the harnesses that I fell in love with, and I'm glad I made the decisions to go with those features on mine. Uh, the, I think it's called cam lock uh, open mechanism, which makes it very easy to both get in and out, where it functions much more like a regular seat belt, and you have this click in and one twist to get out. The other one are these uh, straps here. These allow you in a close tight quarters like an RV7 or 9 or even possibly a 14 to get your waist buckled much tighter. I have to thank the folks over at uh, Fairings Etc. I was going to make a big mistake until I was on the phone ordering my harnesses and they set me straight. First of all, I was going to go all silver and, and I didn't even think that the guy that is more focused on the aesthetics of his plane than the <laughs> than arguably more important features of it. I didn't really think about doing a different color shoulder pad until they brought that up. And they're like, are you sure you want all silver? It's gonna just disappear in there. Why don't you add some contrast? I'm glad I did. Now I've got these awesome black pads on silver. It, it fits perfectly with that black and silver engine I just hung on the front. And I can't thank them enough for making that recommendation. They were also the ones that talked me into some of these upgraded features like the black hardware, the cam lock, and these uh, tightening safety straps. Again, if you wanna get your order in, do so before June 1st, give Fairings Etc. a call. They are the leader in Crow Aviation Harnesses, selling more than any other company. I highly recommend uh, you call them up, you take advantage of their expertise. If you are thinking about pulling the trigger on some harnesses, you can save yourself a couple bucks. Let's get back to the build. Uh, some successes uh, to start. We don't, I, I feel like some weeks are, are completely devoid of successes here in the garage. So when they come around, uh, we gotta learn to celebrate them. That's not true. This project is, is filled with successes and in general is so far a success. Um, but most recently I was able to uh, quite frankly unf the oil cooler door thing. I once again busted out the, the hillbilly hand mill and just kind of made a new axle shaft for the door. So I know by now we know I don't always do things the, the easy way or the correct way. There's nothing more to that. I don't know if I should actually be proud of what I did here. I am proud of it, but I'm, I'm only here because I screwed things up. But what I've assembled here and created is actually really cool. To be clear here, I, I didn't really create anything. This was all previously engineered by show planes. I just remade the parts that I screwed up. The linkage uh, revolves around this, this arm uh, that was previously welded to the old door and I don't have the ability to, to weld, especially aluminum. And so I had some pieces 3D printed. Um, they're not going to cut it in the long run, unfortunately, to have them milled out of aluminum 
is in, in the hundreds of dollars. And so I'm trying to find a better way to do that. If anybody does know of a good source for some CNC machine parts, I would love to hear it because I think that's ultimately the route I'm gonna take. Now, key to remember, uh, the idea is never to completely cut off airflow from the oil cooler. There's really no situation where you would need to do that. That's why I'm not worried and, and why it's actually designed to have sort of a gap surrounding the whole thing. The real idea is we want to restrict airflow during uh, cold temps and then be able to widely open that up during warm temps. Before fitting it back to the airplane, I'm going to readjust back to baffles. Now, a bit ago, I, I went into inventor mode and, and grabbed all of my toys and all the crayons out of the box and set out to design some baffles that would work for the Continental's conical uh, fins, or what we call tapered fins, that create sort of a conical section of the baffle. Well, I got my parts back. Um, rather quick. All of this has happened within about a week and initially things are, are looking promising. Let's, let's take a look at replacing at least one of these baffles, hopefully so that I can start to uh, assemble this baffling structure and have less on off on off. The other big thing is the baffling. The baffling is, is coming along fantastic. As everyone knows, um, typically Lycomings have these, these smaller, uh, lower cooling fins, and they are of equal height from top to bottom, or I guess side to side because the cylinders uh, are, are laid on their side on these engines. With the Continental, with these Titan engines, they taper from a taller fin down to a thinner fin, which reduces some weight. You're able to save, I think, somewhere over five pounds on the engine by doing so. The unfortunate part, uh, at least for these baffle kits, is they're not engineered for those cylinders. So it's up to the builder to create some uh, modifications to the baffling. Now, I'm setting out, hopefully, to, to make a system that is, is very streamlined and, and very easy to bolt up. I'm gonna spend some extra time here, as I've mentioned before, uh, not only modeling these in 3D, uh, laying out the parts so that they can easily be CNC produced, and then creating some really thorough, uh, here on this channel, illustration of how they get formed and bolted up. I'm nearly there. Uh, my first run of these fins has fit incredibly. I'm, I'm blown away at how close I got. And, and that's not trying to toot my own horn. I think some of that is luck. Um, but a little bit of math too, and, and I enjoy that. Right now at this point, I'm gonna make some notes on each of these baffles because I think uh, a, just a little 
tweaking would, would make them 100% and I'll get a new uh, shipment of those out, we will likely be riveting those to the baffles. They will be the final set. It's extremely exciting. Um, I'm, I'm gonna continue to crank away on some other things uh, and, and see what successes I can put under my belt. All right, enough tomfoolery. Um, I feel like I haven't gotten anything done. I'm actually gonna do something. I'm gonna, I have had my uh, exhaust just temporarily bolted. I'm gonna finalize that install. I don't think it's coming off, so let's make sure of it. Uh, typically, I would check the internet, see how other people did it, but it appears that the rest of the build community all got together before doing their exhaust, and they all picked a slightly different way to accomplish the task and then set out. Because I haven't seen a, a single pair of people that have chosen the same way to approach this. Now, my way is as close as I could decipher from the instructions as possible. So I don't want to veer too far from that. But it's hard to tell exactly what they're trying to describe. And it's also hard to tell if they were written from the vantage point of my build. Since everything that I've done here is also a little different than some other builds. Couple sensors going on each cylinder of this thing. I have an exhaust gas temperature sensor that gets drilled into the header and a cylinder head temperature sensor that's gonna go into a cylinder head temperature sensor port uh, on the underside of each cylinder. I'm gonna get those installed so we can get them wired. So, Placement here, uh, a little tricky. First off, they all should be about two inches or so down from the flange. This is for your exhaust gas temperature sensors. You could go between two and four. The, the main important part here, they should all be equal. Now, I wanted to stay clear of this bolt. About that bolt, while we're making some, some notes here, uh, I left out the fact that those bolts on the exhaust flange need some anti-seize. They're subjected to a lot of heat and cold cycles as well as some high torque. Uh, so when they're installed, which unfortunately was cut, I put some anti-seize on there. Anti-seize also applied or, or actually mouse milk applied to the ball joints of that exhaust. All of this in the instructions of your exhaust. Uh, so follow them. In case I need to check torque, um, on these headers, which I will need to do. I don't want to have to remove my sensor if it's in the way. With two inches, I should be clear, but a bigger problem are the spark plugs up here. I was going to have these on the back side, kind of keep things streamlined, but that's going to put the, the probe sticking out right in the way of the spark plug. So I'm actually going forwards with these ones, at least on this side. Um, I've got enough wire to get it rooted in a somewhat clean way, and it's going to keep things uh, the most out of the way that I can. All right, team, I'm pretty spent, uh, but I'm excited about this one, and I'm excited about what we have going. I got some uh, time set aside for building, so we should see some decent progress. If you want to be a part of that, 
make sure you're subscribed. As always, thank you everyone for uh, for all your fantastic comments, for your thumbs up, uh, and we'll see you next time on Ryan Flies.